One of the reassuring and quite frankly surreal aspects of President Biden's primetime address last night was his stark contrast to the former guy. One example being Biden's rebuke of the rise of racially motivated attacks against Asian Americans, a surge many blame on his predecessor's racist rhetoric about the coronavirus. Vicious hate crimes against Asian Americans who've been attacked, harassed, blamed, and scapegoated. At this very moment, so many of them, our fellow Americans, they're on the front lines of this pandemic trying to save lives. And still, still, they're forced to live in fear for their lives just walking down streets in America. It's wrong, it's un-American, and it must stop. Well, members of Congress are now introducing legislation to combat these anti-Asian hate crimes, which, according to one report by California State University, rose by 150 percent last year. Joining me now, two members of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii and Congresswoman Grace Meng of New York. Thank you both for being here. I'm going to start with you, Senator Hirono, because I, I saw your statement uh, that you made. I, I want to say it was earlier this week or last week where you also came out very forthrightly and talked about What's going on? Uh, look, in one case, one of our great producers found um, a case of an 83-year-old named Nancy Ta who was attacked in Westchester on Tuesday. She says her assailant came up to her, cocked his head back, and spit in her face. Um, she closed her eyes, and that's when he punched her in the nose. She fell to the ground, hit the back of her head, and was knocked unconscious. She didn't want to go to the hospital, though. Ms. Ta didn't want to go to the hospital because she couldn't afford the medical bills, which is, a, you know, a total sort of connection between the, the economic, um, you know, sort of perils people are in and the, the physical peril Asian Americans are in. This, this woman, Miss Nancy, is 83. Yes. This is horrible. I am shocked that it's been a year and nothing's been done. I'm shocked, too. And part of why nothing has been done is because we had the previous guy who called, talked about the China virus and the Kung flu and all that create an environment where this kind of these kinds of vicious attacks can happen. And what a contrast with the new president, President Biden, calling out these kinds of crimes, saying it's wrong, it's un-American, and must stop. And it's great to be on your program with my good friend, Congresswoman Grace Meng, who is a leader on these issues. Uh, well, yes, and uh, the leader on this legislation, too, because I know that you're co-sponsoring the Senate version. But Congresswoman Meng, I want you to go ahead and describe describe your legislation and what would it do? Sure. First, thanks, Joy, for having me. And it's always a pleasure and an honor to be with uh, Senator Hirono, our trailblazer. Um, look, this legislation really would help so many people in our community, and not just Asian Americans, actually, anyone who has ever encountered a hateful incident or a hate crime. It asks for dedicated personnel and resources at the Department of Justice and allows for more cooperation and helping local law enforcement, local community organizations better educate our everyday community members so they understand why it's important to even report these types of incidents. And, if, you know, um, Senator, you know, Reverend Sharpton was on um, earlier this evening with Nicole mm -hmm. Wallace, and he made the point that we have to, like, take this on in all of our communities and make this yes. an effort that's joint across communities. You know, there's some incidences where the attackers are African-American. There are incidences where the attackers are white. It can be almost anyone. And so how can we be helpful in, in you know, in other communities that want to be allied with the Asian-American community? What things can we do? I was really gratified uh, to hear Al Sharpton. I watched that segment also. And he said, all of us, regardless of our own ethnic backgrounds, we all need to speak out against these kinds of targeting of any group. And so that's what we all have to do. And of course, what's really important is leadership at the top, President Biden yeah. calling this out and putting together a, a, a process whereby these crimes can be reported. And by the way, there is underreporting because sometimes the police departments don't report a hate crime as a hate crime. And that's why it's important to have somebody designated at the DOJ to review these kinds of crimes so that they can be prevented and prosecuted. You know, and Congresswoman, that's a really good point, right? We need more re reporting. But also, I would have assumed some people are afraid to report it, right? Because people yeah. are not trying to stand out. I mean, in an era where people are, you know, where you had a previous president blaming and naming the virus that has locked everyone up after China, 
even if people are not Chinese, you know, people are not necessarily savvy about who is who. I know this happened when Muslims were being attacked. Sikhs were being attacked, too. So it's like anyone who people think they can group into this group. Are, are, do, do, is there a worry that it's way underreported? Definitely. We've heard about over 3,000 incidents being reported within the last year. But we uh, likely know that the incidents, the number of incidents, um, are much higher. Um, and it's not always easy to report, right? If you're a senior citizen, if you have obstacles uh, with the English language, if you're on your way to work, it's just not easy and convenient necessarily to report these incidents. And I also want to um, piggyback off of what Senator Hirono said earlier and what um, Reverend Sharpton said. Uh, a local black activist at uh, a rally to speak up for Asian Americans uh, once said that the answer to racism is never more racism. It is solidarity. So we want to make sure that our yes. communities, whether it's Black Lives Matters to uh, violence against Asian Americans, that we are standing up and speaking up for each other. A hundred percent. It's the allyship that's really going to get us through. I have to stick with you for just one moment, Congresswoman, because, of course, there is another story, the story in New York uh, about the governor. Uh, there are lots of calls for him to resign. Uh, are you among those who believe that he should resign or do you think the process should play out that's happening there now, uh, meaning the let the um, legal authorities and the AG investigate? I think that the number of stories and the number of incidents that have come out in recent days and weeks make it really difficult for the governor to do his job. I sympathize with the women who have come, come out and share their heartbreaking stories. Um, I did issue a statement today asking for his resignation. Yeah. And now and thereby you see the difference between the way Democrats respond to other Democrats who have these kind of issues and the way the other party responded to Trump for four years, including a rape allegation. Very different parties, everyone. This is the difference. Senator Maisie Hirono, Congressman Grace Meng. I love the sisterhood between you two. I love that you guys were bigging each other up in the beginning. Sisterhood is powerful. Love it. Thank you very much. Appreciate you both.